my name is Heather and I am the aquatics curator here at Josh's Frogs. Um, today I'm going to show you how you can use some of the feeders we already sell for frogs, for your dart frogs, tree frogs, and reptiles as well, and how you can take some of these and also offer them as treats for some of your fish. Um, probably the first one that comes to mind is uh, fruit flies. Here at Josh's Frogs we culture a lot of fruit flies uh, on site and we offer a couple different uh, varieties. They're all wingless, um, and they won't fly away on you. Um, but we offer uh, Melanogaster is our smaller species, and Heidei is our larger species. Fruit flies make really great feeders for specifically bettas and other surface feeding fish. Uh, if you have purchased a betta from us recently, you may want to uh, order a fruit fly culture. If you already have them uh, for your dart frogs, this make a great treat for your betta. Here we have some producing cultures. Uh, they, you can also order uh, newer cultures so they'll be ready to harvest in like a week or so. Uh, these are already pumped and ready to go. Um, these are also, so these are great treats for bettas. These are great treats for killifish. Um, if you're doing all the giant bettas or larger garamis and things, the, you might want to do the Heidi Eye. Um, if you're doing smaller species, you want to do the Melanogaster. Um, like really nutritious. Now, I will mention that if you're feeding these to your fish, any of these insects, you do not need to supplement them. You do not need to put on calcium powder or anything like that, any vitamins. Uh, these will come off in the water. So um, they're good to go as is, and they're not meant to be a staple diet. They're meant more as a treat. Um, but fish in the wild eat a lot of bugs. They eat a lot of crustaceans. They eat a lot of other little, little critters. Um, they eat live food. So this is a great way to introduce that enrichment and that natural prey drive in your fish. Uh, another great one, a great feeder to use, uh, and you use these a lot of times as cleanup crew for your uh, dart frogs, uh, bioactive uh, enclosures, and, and so forth. Um, these are gonna be your springtails. These uh, are not actually a true insect, um, but they're a great feeder nonetheless. They actually, uh, well, they're naturally buoyant, so when you add them to your aquarium, they'll float right up to the top. Um, so this works, again, really great for surface feeders. Uh, a lot of these bugs will be better if your fish is going to go for it right away at the surface. Um, what's nice about the springtails is that if the fish do not eat them, uh, unlike things like fruit flies, which might crawl out, um, you might have a few wingless fruit flies in your house. What's nice about the springtails is that they tend to stick to the water and then they're gonna act as sort of a cleanup crew for your aquarium around the rim where you have flake food and things decomposing. Springtails will actually uh, help break that down and they're completely harmless to your aquarium. Um, and a lot of times they will just sort of pop up in aquariums, um, but you can add, definitely buy some of our cultures here and then add those to your aquariums for a little bit of extra uh, excitement for a lot of your nano fish, a lot of your um, really tiny uh, rasboras and things like that will probably go after them. Uh, another great feeder is going to be your uh, black soldier fly larva. We actually there's a fish food on the market right now uh, called uh, it's, it's by Fluval. Uh, it's called Bug Bites, and it actually uses. It actually uses black soldier fly larvae in that food because they're such a powerhouse in terms of nutrition. Um, you can see here, we've got one right here, he's squirming around. Uh, these ones won't float, they'll sink. Um, they're great for, I had someone ask if they could feed them to their crayfish. You can feed them to any of your bottom feeders, uh, catfish, um, not your plecos, not your algae eaters, but any of your omnivores or insectivores. Uh, and they make a great, great nutritional boost for your animals. Another really great uh, treat that kind of sinks in the water, you may tong feed it. Um, this is gonna be your wax worm, and it's actually sold in bait shops a lot because fish just love them. Um, they're very fatty, uh, but they move around. Uh, they're actually a great treat for axolotls and things like that too, but a lot of your, um, again, insectivorous, predatory, um, any of your catfish around the bottom of the tank will go after it. If you keep a lot of cichlids, uh, larger cichlids will definitely go after these. Um, it's a great boost as you're trying to get an animal to gain weight. A lot of times it's used in the uh, uh, reptile hobby to help fatten up uh, skinny animals. 
So it's a great treat for fish that are maybe need to gain a little bit of weight. Other live foods, another great option would be crickets. Um, these are a little bit larger. These are our three quarter inch. Uh, they go all the way down to one eighth inch, uh, about pinhead size. Um, very, very tiny. So you can sort of cater, cater to the size of the animal you're feeding. These are really, really popular with things like African butterfly fish, um, uh, Oscars and things like that. They'll come right up and, and gulp them. Um, and this, the, uh, crickets will drown. Um, any of these pretty much will drown eventually, except for the springtails, which will just live forever in your aquarium. Uh, but the crickets will drown. Um, so you want to make sure that if they're not being eaten, take them out. Um, they definitely will uh, add to the ammonia in the tank and that's not a good thing. But if you're going to be feeding crickets to your um, fish, you want to make sure that they can swallow them whole without um, getting stuck in their throat. Um, crickets have these kind of spiky legs that can sometimes get in the way. Um, if you're ever concerned about that, you can pull the back legs off before you feed them. Um, and uh, if you're not comfortable with doing live, um, again, live food is a great enrichment for animals, um, especially um, a great enrichment for fish. And uh, so a lot of times when you're offering more bugs in their diet, you're trying to get that sort of, you want, you want the fish to sort of chase after them and, and, and sort of engage in natural behaviors that maybe they wouldn't with their flake food and their pellet food. Um, but that being said, if you still want to get variety in the diet, um, without offering live, but you want things like bugs. Um, we do have like canned crickets here. Um, these are our Josh's frogs. We have roaches, crickets, we have uh, mealworms, um, and this is just preserved and it's ready to go whenever you want it to. Uh, just whatever you don't use in one feeding, um, you'll want to make sure that, or if you don't use the whole container, store it in your fridge. It can last for a few days. Um, these are a little bit bigger, I will say. If you're going to be feeding these canned foods, uh, they're a nice size. Uh, you probably only want to be feeding them to larger fish. And you may try to like tong feed or something like that just to make sure that they're getting it. Again, if it's not eaten, take it out of the tank. Um, another great option is these Pro Bugs uh, feeders. We have like oh, there are many more varieties of these. There's even grasshoppers and like silkworm pupae and things like that. And it even has on the label fish. So you can feed them to your fish. Um, in addition to your, if you're feeding some to your bearded dragon, you're feeding some to your, um, your frog, you can also feed them to your fish, um, whatever's left over. Or if you use a whole package, you have a lot of fish, you can do that too. Um, these are nice, They're, they have no preservatives, they are vacuum sealed, um, uh, soft. What's nice about these canned things, I don't have a lot of dried products on the table here. Uh, dried products tend to have a little less nutritional value. They're a little, they have less of the juices, they're less enticing. Um, these are going to be more appetizing probably for your fish than if you did dried mealworms. But speaking of mealworms, another great option are live mealworms. And we do sell uh, giants and regular mealworms. Uh, again, you want to kind of cater to the size of the animal that you're feeding. Uh, these uh, regular mealworms are actually fairly small. Uh, can work for a lot of um, a lot of predatory fish that and these will kind of wiggle around the water a little bit. Um, they are a little tough, um, which is fine. They just need to be uh, make sure that the fish can either swallow them whole or break it into pieces. Um, you may choose to pinch the head before you feed them, uh, especially with the larger mealworms. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing superworms as much because they do have pretty powerful jaws on them. But these, um, if you just pinch the head a little bit before throwing them into the tank, um, it'll ensure that they're not gonna bite your fish back. So another, probably last but not least, a great option uh, for feeding fish would be night crawlers. And this is another bait, um, bait shop feeder. So you can find these, there, there's red wigglers um, that tend to be they're like a smaller worm that tend to be a little less palatable, uh, a little less enticing to fish. They kind of have like a, a gross taste to them, but night crawlers are a little different. Um, these ones are very, very appetizing to fish, and um, they're also quite large. Uh, these are gonna be something that you're gonna wanna feed to like your large stingrays, your large, maybe your large oscar, your large um, uh, catfish, uh, things of that nature. Um, you can also chop these up and in smaller pieces and feed that. 
Uh, if your fish cannot eat this whole, this whole uh, earthworm or nightcrawler is actually probably only good for something exceptionally large. Um, and these will store in your fridge and uh, you can feed these off as, you, as much as you want. Um, these are not too fatty. They are, again, I would suggest any of these live feeders more of a treat um, than a staple because you still want to make sure that you're giving you're giving your flake food, your pellet food, your frozen food, your other aquatic live feeders and things like that to really round out the diet. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk to you guys about these today is that variety is very important in an animal's diet. Um, so this is a nice way to get a little bit of that variety on some, and give them some foods that you maybe didn't think you could feed to your fish. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content. Follow us on Instagram, uh, like us on Facebook, and visit our website, joshesfrogs.com.